Good morning, firearms friends. Joe Colander here for Rock Island Auction Company. As you know, the preview hall is behind me and that can only mean one thing, that it is my favorite day. It is preview day, which is the day before every sporting and collector and premier auction that we have where you get to come in and look at the preview hall, which is all set up. This time, over 7,300 guns. Uh, that's four days of auction. It is open to the public. Both preview day and the auction are open to the public. So you can come here today and put your hands on just about anything. Now, most times I'll walk through and we'll kind of look at some highlights and we don't get a chance to look in the cabinets very much. So what I like to do is take you through the various days. I'm just gonna pick one gun out of each cabinet, kind of at random. Uh, I have peeked through a little bit, through most of them anyway, to find something interesting. Uh, so let's go take a look. And the first one is a Korth because I'm a sucker for revolvers. But you look at it, it's not a regular blued, beautiful Korth. In fact, you can see some of the markings are, are pretty hard to find. I had to, I had to look quite a bit on that Korth, but it is a Korth. It's got no, parkerized, which to me means you still get an excellent revolver at a nice price. Oh, 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 oh. oh Korth revolvers. And of course it had competition in this case. You know, it's right next to a, right next to a, um, a Breda Belenium. There's all sorts of Smith and Wessons and single actions in here. So in, in other Colt revolvers. So, I had a hard time picking, but the choice has been made. Let's move on to the next cabinet and see what goodies we get in cabinet two. Cabinet number two, we've got a pair of wrist breakers here, some Smith & Wesson Performance Center 500s, of course, and 500 Smith & Wesson. This is one of two sets, uh, this one in stainless, of course, that are consecutive serial numbered Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. So if you can imagine uh, a very short and expensive and probably painful range trip where you get to just blast away with some of these things. This is a, these are the kind of toys you can come away with at the Sporting Collector auction. Okay, cabinet three, horse of a different color and horse literally. It was really hard to pick one because there's one Smith & Wessons, which is my weakness, and stag grips, and there's two on the same gun, so it's a little hard to choose. But going from those giant X frames, we're gonna go to a little Colt vest pocket in 25. It's got some nice case coloring here, and it's actually part of all these Colts up here. We got a beautiful 1908 uh, with ivory. Uh, nickel there's a 1903 there's another vest pocket there's an actual browning uh design and then there's one looks like with some antique ivory grips on there so but this would be a good way to start for a for a colt collector or for anybody who wants to get their hands on one of these colts in this auction okay next case a lot of hard decisions there's really nice nambus there's 1911s 1911 a1s we have a host of manufacturers there's a whitney wolverine a really nice colt woodsman like the options are plentiful but mine ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho Comes a little Colt 1905 with the cutaway. You'd never know it if you looked on this side. And that's a four digit serial number. And it looks beautiful. Look at those old flat slab grips, the old safety, beautiful. But of course that's only half the side. Then you got the beast over here and it shows how everything works. 1905, I mean, you gotta love them. First Colt, first gun ever, chambered in 45 ACP. For me, this is a no-brainer to pick out of this case. Next case, a lot of great foreign military pistols, Lugers, Nambus, Tokarevs, Mausers. I mean, it's all here. And one that jumps out at you is an old Husqvarna 1887 revolver. And it jumps out because look at the straw coloring on those small parts on your spring, your trigger, hammer. Look at that. What a beauty. What a beauty. Boy, some more great foreign military pistols in this from Berettas and Mausers. And there was some Santien revolvers actually in the last one that we didn't cover. There's um, Nagant revolvers, but a Rothsteyer 1907 that looks like this is just the king of unusual looking pistols. Boy, they just capture your attention right away. <laughs> with the feed mechanism, with these, these controls that just kind of pop out of nowhere. What a great pistol. Three more cabinets to go on day one. We have a great cabinet of Smith & Wessons and some custom Colts, uh, Schofields, regular number threes, and a lot of really neat small self-defense sort of pocket revolvers. Boy, there's a, a genre of collecting you could really dive into and it doesn't take up a lot of space. But how, when you're talking about great Smith & Wessons, 
can you not pick up the Model 320 revolving rifle Smith & Wesson? Uh, we have a great video on this, goes a little more into the numbers, but only 977 made, uh, and they are a rare bird indeed. To have one in an s and auction is a big treat. Look at these modeled grips on this end. They're just so neat. Even a globe front sight. These were a pretty uh, pretty deluxe item. Does come with its uh, detachable stock as well, and just what a great Smith & Wesson. Second to last cabinet, choices aren't getting any easier. Brass barreled snap bayonets, Merwin and Hulberts, um, Sharps pepper boxes, Merwin and Hulberts, more Merwin and Hulberts, but this one tucked away in the back, you almost didn't see it. There's a tag on it, it indicates it's from the Bailey Brower collection. So again, remnants of our December premiere, this is a Galois palm pistol. You can see right there, it's got a little port cover. Got one number one, little bead. This is, a, of course, a French design. I believe it's an eight millimeter cartridge. And it's just one of these designs of the time when no no idea was a bad one. You just kind of give it a little squeeze. And as you squeeze, you notice this port comes up so you can eject and get your next shell. Very cool. You flip it over and the manual of arms is pretty too. And you can even check how many cartridges you have remaining. Neat little design on a neat little gun. Last cabinet for day one. A lot of classics in here from Colt 49 Pockets, Remingtons, you have Star Double Actions, you got some uh, Savage Figure 8, you got a lot of classic mid 19th century American guns. But I'd like to look at something a little earlier, and that is this flintlock up here, and it is a Harper's Ferry flintlock. Boy, talk about early American history, one of the earliest arsenals in the United States, and you can tell because Harper's Ferry is marked back here, 1808. Uh, as far as establishing an arsenal in a young country, it's about as early as it gets. These great early U.S. symbols here, it's still an eagle shield holding an arrow, it's holding an olive branch, symbol that goes back almost as old as our country. Look at this great brass furniture everywhere. The thimble, on your rod, there are the bands. Flip it over and no surprise to expect it on the other side. Wood looks pretty darn good on it too. Uh, big U.S. stamps, just fun to see how things were made so long ago. Uh, easy choice, easy choice for me on an early, early Harper's Ferry pistol like this. That's about what we have for day one. Hope you like looking through the cabinets because we're gonna do it for every single day in the auction for our February 14th through 17th Sporting and Collector Firearms Auction. See you tomorrow for day two, and until then, uh, keep your powder dry.